Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Millay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful, without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Red Flags for Entrepreneurs, and I have a special guest today, on Marketing Matters. Her name is Maureen Edwards. We're going to discuss building a business successfully as an entrepreneur and some of the red flags to watch out for along your journey. Before we dive in, though, I want to share a quote with you from Steve Jobs. We all know who he is. I bring this quote to you today to remind you that success is not an overnight thing. If you really look closely, most overnight successes took a long time. So we know Mr. Jobs, prior to his passing, was so successful. He built the iPhone and the iPod and the iMac and and built Apple to be an amazing, amazing company. But it didn't start overnight. It took him a long time of trial and error to get there. And I think we all have to temper our own expectations when we're building our businesses so that we don't push ourselves too far into things that we're not ready for. So today we're discussing the business building for entrepreneurs. We want to highlight some of the red flags to watch out for so you can stay on your path to success, avoiding some of the pain myself and my peers have experienced and seen as we've gone through this building. So you may be saying, what's a red flag, right? What, what does she mean by red flag? Well, as a business owner and entrepreneur, we're moving forward to have a business that we're dreaming of. Along the way, we're learning and growing. We know so many things, but not everything. We have to listen to others more experienced to expand our skills, fill in the gaps in our knowledge. But often, many of the voices that we encounter are not really telling us what is really helpful. We have to learn how to filter those messages and offers and take the steps that fit for us and build, not leap into business. There are no shortcuts and red flags are a way to tell you that you're trying to take one or you're trying to engage in something that may not be right for you. So my fellow entrepreneur and good friend Maureen Edwards is my guest today and she and I are going to talk about what some of these red flags may be that she's encountered as she's worked with entrepreneurs. So Maureen is an award-winning branding, marketing, and business strategist, as well as a two times award-winning inventor. She's built six profitable companies from conception to commercialization and has worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs to start, turn around, or scale theirs. Her mission is to take the heart out of entrepreneurship for at least one small business owner a day by eliminating the mistakes, overwhelm, and complexity that derail success and sustainability. Her approach includes teaching simple, real-world best practices and easy-to-implement effective strategies with hands-on mentoring. She loves being in the trenches, guiding entrepreneurs every step of the way. She's a frequent keynote speaker, podcast and TV guest, national instructor for small business organizations, and lead instructor at universities and colleges. Her motto is, you don't need to know everything in business, only what works. So let's check in with Maureen. And- Hi, Maureen. How are you? Great, Denise. Thanks so much for having me today. Oh, I'm so thrilled you can join us on the show today. Um, you have spent so much time working with entrepreneurs, and I... I'm in awe of what you do and the simplicity of what you share with them to enrich their businesses. So I wanted to talk to you today because my audience of new entrepreneurs, women in particular, who are starting out, who really need, need to hear from people like you and I, who are traveling the journey as well, or have, are a little further along, some things to look out for and some things to know that there are other people out there going through these trials and travails. So I want to know what led you to work with entrepreneurs and how did you get here a little bit? You know, I didn't expect to be an entrepreneur myself, 
Denise. I was a corporate girl all the way. I was one that, you know, loved getting dressed up in business suits every day and running my team and, and the whole corporate environment, I just thrived at. So it was never on my radar to say, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to own a business. None of that. But I accidentally invented a product. And that was the aha moment where you say, I either go for it or somebody else will. Have you ever seen those products where you're like, I thought of that. Why didn't I take the risk? Right. And I knew if I didn't, I would always regret it. So I was incredibly afraid. It was the scariest thing to leave, you know, you know, the security of a corporate job and you get 401k and you've got bonuses and, and it's like, why would you do that? But I did. It was hell and back going to tell you. And I said to people, the experience was so profound. And to leverage my 401k and my kids college education and everything to bring this product to market and almost lose everything. I said, you know, when I ever get the opportunity to actually work with entrepreneurs on a more personal basis, more directly, that's where, where my mission will be. That's eventually where I'll end up and six companies later and this is the one that gets to do it yes (laughs) I love that so you know I was just about to say you know you're you say that your mission is to take the heart out of entrepreneurship for at least one small business owner a day yeah how how do you do that how what is it that you believe about this whole process of entrepreneurship entrepreneurship my goodness (laughs) I think a lot of people are coming from corporate or coming from some type of more structured job and they want to control their destiny or in some cases and a lot more now is that people have been displaced in the marketplace. So a lot of the entrepreneurs I work with are over 50 just because the stats demonstrate that they're building businesses more than anybody. I think we know that. Yeah, we know that, right? Um, And I've always said that there is a process that needs to be put in place. And it took me a long time and a lot of hardship and a lot of mistakes and a lot of studying it. And when we, we talk about living it and doing it and figuring it out, there are certain things that need to be in place to build a business that can generate revenue, can acquire profitability, and more importantly, secure sustainability. And I figured those processes out. And I simplified them. And it's really my mission, whether I work with somebody directly or indirectly, that they get a good foundation to their business, that it's really sound and strong, and that processes be put in place that can allow them to have a business they love and fulfill whatever dream that they're, they're working on that. So it's eliminating mistakes. It's eliminating that complexity to it. Business should not be complex. It should not be. We make it complex. Like as people, we make business complex, but business itself really isn't if you follow some things. So, well, you know, we, we bring, we bring to the table a lot of our own preconceptions of what things should be and what things are. But Mm -hmm. once you're actually in it, sometimes you, you, you have all that, what you think is experience, but it's really just observation. And so then you, you jump into it and you start doing things and you're like, well, how often do you challenge yourself and say, well, why am I doing that? Did I just hear that that's the thing I should be doing? Or is that something I really believe I should be doing? You know, that's an interesting thing as you mature in this process where you kind of go, oh, where did I get that piece of knowledge from that I think this is what it means to be do accounting for your business or to do the, you know, like, I don't know where those things came from, but sometimes you have to challenge those things, which I think is really interesting, right? I think I know where they came from. Yeah. So when people start a business, they think it's easy. I swear they, they take it on and they go, I was really good at my corporate job. I have an incredible amount of expertise and talent, and they do, but owning a business is a different animal. You're in a different playing field, and I think a lot of people try and build their livelihood and build a structure on YouTube and Google, Right. and that's what's flooding their ideas of what it should be, Hmm. and it's not their unique experience. 
because what you're talking about is, yes, they're an entrepreneur, but everybody's journey is different. Everybody's business perspective and vision is different. Their missions are different. And so YouTube is kind of like a one size fits all. And I think you made a really good, good point is you need to ask why. And if you don't know why you should be doing something, and like you said, step back. Right, right. So, so that's what I think happens. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's one of my red flags. Sometimes when I get bogged down in something or something's feeling particularly stressful or heavy, um, I've gotten to a point where I do sit down and have coffee with it, as our wonderful friend would say, yeah. and figure try to figure out why. And that's one of my red flags. That's one of my, something's not sitting right. I have to figure out whether this is real, whether I need to approach it differently, whether I'm thinking I have to do this, but I don't really this way, you know, that kind of thing. So if you had to pinpoint red flags for a new entrepreneur, one is listening to your gut when something isn't fitting. Oh yeah. Do you have any other examples of <laughs> things that would, <laughs> would be to look out for? If it seems too good to be true, it's not going to happen. All right. There are one. a lot of people, a one. lot of people are promising the world. You can 10 X this and you can 10 X that and scale in 30 days, build a course in 30 minutes. It just doesn't work that way. Entrepreneurship is something that it, it simmers. It is something that just takes time. And if you, if you rush it and we've, we've all talked about this in, mm -hmm. in our group, if you rush it and you don't check off the right boxes, you're building a business on matchsticks. And a lot of people will not build the foundation because building a foundation, is not really the fun part. It's like, mm -hmm. it's art and science and everybody wants to skip the science because it's hard, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah. eliminating that, you know, can make it easier if you, if you talk with people or you work with people who understand how to eliminate it. But people want to go to the art. They want to build logos. They want to go ahead and, and come up with a really cute name. They want to build their website in beautiful colors and fonts. And then they want to go right to marketing and announce to everybody that they're an entrepreneur. Right? Right. But it's such a heavy lift if you don't do what you need to before right. that. And some of that, that things that we have all bought into or, or have been tempted by is skipping over the foundation of relationships yes. because we had a corporate world before that you could walk in the door and you belonged to a community or you were part of a community that was, you were collective, you were collective, right? When you go out on your own, you're on your own and, and how that gets built is, is foreign, right? Yeah. But that is just the thing that you need is you need that foundational mm -hmm. connection with people and a lot of the things that are promised to us in the online world with, you know, followers and likes and all these other things are simulating supposedly those connections, but they're fake. They're not real connections. And I think for, for something to really take root and grow, you really do have to establish some sort of connection with an audience or a group of people to support you and surround you, right? So I think that's one of the big things is that you can't skip over the steps to find your people. And I think that's a really important, important point. I, I remember when I wasn't getting dressed up in the business suits anymore. It was like overnight, I was sitting in my basement in sweatpants all by myself. Right. And it's so isolating and people have to realize that they've got to get a community going. They've got to get a group of connection out there who they can learn from, who they can run ideas by, who can they do market research with. And it's authentic and it's pure because you can't do this sitting in your basement by yourself. I, I will tell you right now, you lose your mind. You know, yeah. your, your yeah. mindset gets impacted because you start believing your own negative thoughts sometimes, the fear oh, yeah. and the panic builds up and you need people who have done this before or who are going through it at the same time with you to work through it together right so going back to your your red flag about um you know don't buy into the promises that are too big or too uh 
trust yourself. If you think it's too good, don't follow it. It's okay to look for an expert to help you with a skill you don't have or with something you're you're not knowledgeable about. I mean, that's part of learning this too, is we don't, we weren't all born to have all these skills. Um, So there is some elements of you have to acquire the knowledge you need and you can certainly do it, but there's a risk to, to taking that advice from someone. So you have to kind of try it on and if it fits you know you keep it if it doesn't fit then you throw it away so sometimes people buy into an expert or they they follow an expert or they try to learn from them and that person just doesn't seem right or it doesn't seem like it fits or it's not for you and I think that I would say if you get that feeling in your stomach that this isn't the right approach for you you're probably right and and even though you may have invested money, it's it's better to step away from something than it is to try to do something that doesn't fit your style or your personality because it won't work, right? I agree. If it's not authentic and you're not meshing as far as what your real vision about how to proceed in business is aligned, mm-hmm. um, if your comfort level just isn't quite aligning, then it's probably a no-go. And I think one of the things that people can do if they are researching somebody they want to connect with, somebody who they say, you know what, I I need a coach, a mentor, a consultant. I need to bring somebody in because that is smart. When you recognize you have gaps and there are people who can help you search for the right people. Right. One of the ways to do this is I think when you have a conversation with somebody I think you will have a good understanding if they're on the same page and ask the right questions as to how do you conduct business? What are your priorities? Mm -hmm. How do you conduct business in your own business, right? And that'll give you a good idea of of how they go about it. Mm -hmm. And I think anybody promising you something overnight is not going to be able to deliver or your expectations are going to be so high that you will be disappointed. Right. I'm very realistic, Denise. I will tell people that building a business is hard. There are people out there that can take the hard away. But at the end of the day, you are still in control and you still have to implement this. You still have to put the effort in. Nobody is going to do it for you. They're going to walk alongside of you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a big difference. So they need to research the people who have gotten results with them, talk with them. Right. Um, they, they need to get a good understanding of what their philosophy in business is. It's not an overnight thing. Yes, I, I love that philosophy, trying to find out what's behind their philosophy. And I, I think if we were to look for practical ways to do this, what I call due diligence before you yes. do a deal, right? If you were in a corporate world or in any situation where you're you're going to hire a contractor, you speak to other people that have worked with them. You look for instances or reviews. You you interview them and ask them questions. I think we have to apply whatever we can from that safeguard, you know, the things we do to safeguard ourselves in other situations to the online world, especially as an entrepreneur. So whether that's looking for videos that they've posted on YouTube and listening to how they speak to people, whether it's looking for them at what kind of events they go to, what kind of events do they show up on going on clubhouse and, and joining rooms that they're in and, and seeing how they speak to people and what their ideas are and learning that before you entertain jumping into a program with them or purchasing something from them, I think is something I would have liked to have had better breaks to do in the very beginning when I was kind of panic, you know, that basement panic where you're like, I got to get out of here and figure out how to connect with some things, you know? And um, I think if I had done my due diligence better, it would have helped me avoid some of the missteps, but you know, the missteps also bring you the positive too, because you learn from them. So I think one thing when, you know, you got a lot of coaches out there, you got a, a lot of consultants, you have a lot of course creators. And I think the biggest question out there you should ask is, how long have you been doing this? What success have you had in your business? Mm -hmm. And 
if they're brand new to it, especially for those that are trying to help you build a business, you don't want somebody who's building their business why they're helping you build yours, okay? So they have to come with the situation where I've done this before, I know how to do this. So for people like me, where I help people build businesses or turn them around or scale, if you're coming with a really strong expertise, whether it's in marketing, social media, like yourself, you do beautiful website design and technology, that's a little bit different because you can really consult with them with that expertise to be able to, to move their business. Mm-hmm. Helping somebody build a business, they've never done it before. That's yeah. a red flag for me. Right, right. I, that right there is a red flag. Yeah. And I would say sometimes when uh, people say to you, build a course, teach people, that'll be what your business is. For me, coaching someone on something that I don't have an innate knowledge of is like impossible. Yes. I really, I, I would never stand up in front of a room and say, I'm an, uh, like when someone calls me an expert, I kind of cringe, you know, it's like, I'm not an expert. I have some great experiences and yeah. I have some knowledge in my toolkit and I'm totally wonderfully able to speak on those topics, but don't ask me about things other than my own experience, because, right. you know, I have concepts and knowledge that I can speak to things and do things. But sometimes there are people out there that are selling things. It's like, wow, tell me when you did that, you know? Yeah. And how successful were you? You were in marketing right. for 10 years, but can you give me exactly what you did? Can you show me your work that you've done for somebody else? Can you show me metrics of how you actually started at point A and you got somebody or even yourself to Z, Mm -hmm. right? And everything in between. So they're just are very pointed questions that you have to ask. And I've never considered myself an expert because once you call yourself that, it's almost like you have nothing else to learn. And in marketing and in business, it's so complex. It changes so dramatically. I mean, look at social media. It's like every day. So you constantly have to keep up with it. I say I'm a specialist. I specialize in, in certain parts, Mm -hmm. but it's all come to hands-on experience of making mistakes and knowing the pieces to put Mm -hmm. into the puzzle. I think that's wonderful. I think that's really awesome. I think we're, we're, we're really narrowing down some of the things people can look for and reinforce, I'm sure what they are already feeling in their, in their insides when they're, when they're trying to evaluate something and to, I want to encourage people to, to listen to your instincts and to listen to your internal voice, because, because you're not an expert, because you don't have experience in something, you doubt yourself so, so much. Yes. But you have to keep a strong foundation and keep your character um, as fortified as possible so that you can navigate the the crazy maze of all the things that are going to be laid in front of you. Right. So I think of that as, you know, holding tight your foundation of what you believe yeah. as you go through this as a character trait kind of thing. Like don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Like, you know, just, just understand that you have a knowledge and instinct. They're very important as well as what you're looking for and what you're trying to find and the expert expertise of other people, but you can't let go of what you believe either, or you'll just blindly go into things and, you know, it'll be a lot harder. So what other character traits do you think we we should encourage people to hang on to? Well, first off, be true to your mission and your authenticity and be open to sharing it with the people who you serve. Because the more relatable you are and letting them know that I have experienced this. These are things I can totally relate that you are going through and I went through it too. And this is how I overcame it. So be authentic and and relevant with them. I think another thing too is if you're going to get through entrepreneurship and and run a small business or um, put together marketing campaigns to reach, acquire um, and, and retain customers, I, I think you have to give yourself the opportunity to say, I can pivot. 
Okay. It's not all going to work. Mm. I'm going to make mistakes. Some of them are going to be flops, but I'm going to recognize it and I'm going to pivot quickly and try something else or go back to what works. It's okay to take risks and things because that's how you, you learn. And some things may just explode and be amazing. But as an entrepreneur, I, and I think just in business alone, things change so rapidly, mm-hmm. you can't control it. All you can do is control how you are going to deal with the situation. So don't be stuck and, and kind of stubborn because either I did it like that the last time and it worked or in my old job it worked or no. be ready to just on a dime. Make sure you have that. Do you want to call it character? I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's just a, a small business owner trait. Or it's just a belief. It's a trait. Yeah. It's it's confidence enough to know when to try something mm-hmm. and know whether you should continue it or not. It's that you're in control of that and to realize the signs of something not working and not be so entrenched in your bright idea, you know, be willing to kill your darlings, you know, if they don't work, turn another <laughs> direction, right? I mean, that's what they say when you're writing, you know, you write the beautiful things and then you yeah. go and you read it back and you go, oh, that was a beautiful sentence, but it doesn't fit here. So you got to go cross, cross it out. You know, it's the same kind of thing. And I think that's, you know, where small business owners say, I, I keep doing the same thing. I keep doing the same result because they haven't gotten off YouTube. And they wonder why it's not working. Uh, and, and so I, I think it's amazing. Like 5 million new businesses were created in 2021, which is awesome because people are taking the risk into entrepreneurship and trying to control their destiny and say, I'm doing it on my terms. But not only is that a ton of competition, but the majority of people went into consulting, mm-hmm. coaching, course creation, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's hard for people who know what they're doing, who get results, who make real personal relationships and are in the best interest of the people we serve after somebody has fallen or somebody else and they've spent a ton of money with. Now they're super skeptical and they're still on their hamster wheel doing the same thing, making the same mistakes, not knowing where to go next. And it's because they got burned. So it really irritates me when we see people. Oh, breaks your heart. Yeah, you know, it does. It, it does. does. I and, mean, we've all been there. We've yeah. all made missteps. And yep. that's what I like to call them as opposed to mistakes, missteps. That's actually and, better. I like that better. Yeah. And, um, and from those missteps, the next step can be in a different direction. You know, you don't have to keep going that way. You can turn and pivot as you say and and go in a different direction very easily is but you have to be honest with yourself too right. and that's hard to do right so we come into entrepreneurship with a lot of our own personal baggage sometimes and i think setting that aside and believing in yourself is probably one of the hardest things that you have to do is take your personal um belief system that you have about yourself that you may not have examined very much, but you have to kind of not let that inform everything you do and everything you, you say, you have to start to put it aside and say, well, what do I want to do and believe in yourself and allow yourself to make mistakes, allow yourself to grow and learn. And and I think that's being open to change is, is a hard thing, but it's really important. And I think, and, and I got stuck with this in my first company. A lot of what you're saying, Denise, is about ego. Yeah. It, it really is. It's, I can do this. I can do this. I'm an expert in this. I, and all of a sudden, as a solopreneur, you're an expert in everything. And really, that capitalize on your strengths, identify the gaps, and then find opportunities for somebody to come in and help balance it out. But when people can't recognize that, building a company or putting a website together, or doing a marketing strategy, any of those are skills that people take many, many years and many times they've, they've fallen and had to pick themselves back up. And so I always say, if you were on the side of the road and your car broke down, 
would you get out and YouTube your way how to fix it? <laughs> or would you say, I, I need a tow truck and, you know, car repair because I don't know how to do this. You know, it's right, the same thing with right. the plumber. You've sprung a leak. Are you going to, you know, while your, your toilet's overflowing, sit there and try and, okay, let me Google how to fix this. No, <laughs> no. call a plumber. Right. Right. So why do people think building a business or creating a website on their own is that easy? You're right. right? You're right. You're right. I love that. Well, Maureen, it's been wonderful talking to you. I'm wondering if we can talk about how people can find you and what you, what your main um, way that you convey your knowledge and your expertise to people is. I think one of the best ways is to go to my website, 8simplesteps.net. I have tons of free resources there for entrepreneurs that I've created. I have a total vault of free courses and um, free videos and just some of my best practices and some of my templates. And I give those freely to entrepreneurs to help them move the needle for themselves. So they can go there. They can contact me from there. There's a contact form and they can learn more about the two proprietary blueprints I created, which is building the foundation of your business and then taking it to the the next level and it's all about starting in the right way and sustaining stay in business um and if you're struggling out there go and take a look and see where your next steps are going to be so i'm all over social media but i will tell you that's the easiest way to learn more about me and directly contact me thank you so much do you have one piece of inspiration you would leave for our entrepreneurial audience well, I have two. I always say that uh, business does not have to be hard. The, the whole thing is you don't need to know everything. You just need to know what works. And please don't let perfection, perfection in building your company or doing something be the enemy of getting it done and launched. You can always tweak it as you go. But if you wait for something to be perfect, you'll never get it up off the ground. Gosh, that's wonderful, Maureen. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you being here and sharing all your wisdom and knowledge with, with my audience. And I look forward to having you back. I hope you'll come back again. Absolutely. I so appreciate you having me. And I think that what you're doing here is amazing to get the word out to other people that there are there are real resources with real people who are authentically trying to make a difference for people. So thank you for doing that. Thanks, Maureen. Fantastic conversation we had with Maureen, huh? Um, I am so thrilled that she could join me today. And I, I know she was, she'll be super helpful for you. Um, I have a free gift for you today. It's called Five Website Secrets to Make Sure Your Ideal Customers Find You. And if you go to https colon www.dmalay.com slash five, F-I-V-E, you'll be able to sign up and you'll receive a link to the download of the guide. <clears throat> I'll give you a minute to make note of that address. And thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is. And my hope is you came away from this episode with a some nugget you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful info for you so that you can have an amazing and thriving business, great relationship with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have any questions, drop a post on my Facebook page, Marketing Matters or De Denise Malay, or go to my website at dmalay.com and, and send in the contact form. And join me here next week for our next episode where we'll dive into more marketing topics that matter for you. Thanks so much for your time.